Hey, are we gonna play Deadpool? Yeah, we are. The Merc with the Mouth? Nice, clever. That's not clever, that's Dead Merc calling. I know that. So it's not clever, I didn't come up with it. I know that. So why did you say that was clever? Because it was a joke. Rob Leffield, you did it again. with the Mouth. He was in the credits who? for Deadpool. Rob Leefield. Leefield. He's, the one, he's the one who like made Deadpool. He hates feet and he likes large upper bodies on men. Yeah, yeah. and and, and like wasp-like waists on women. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, have you ever seen that article about him and his art? You should look it up. You'd like it. He's, it's he, like you'd like it a lot. As much as people like make fun of Mr. Mr. Leefield, he did define comic did. book aesthetics for a decade. And it was terrible, but he yeah. did define it. But like pockets, pouches and guns. Pockets on pockets. <laughs> I'm I, I God. Well, yeah. okay, so we'll get to that in One a second. Real quick. Oh yeah. One, two, three. On home sweet home. And then do a Veteran. do a difficulty setting. Exactly. Uh -huh. He's calling you a baby. Welcome to a uh, self-referential fourth wall breaking episode of Dude Soup. We all talk about Deadpool, everyone's favorite Ryan Reynolds. Man, those references, huh? Oh, are we looking up Rob Leefield? Yeah. He's he's a he's like a He he looked cool in the nineties. Everything- All of this stuff looks oh, like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. all shiny and- Got it. People have like, really big cheekbones. Did he- did he create Damn. the cable character? He did Superman? I yeah. Oh, they're- the Captain America picture is the one you need. That's, yeah, the, that's the one with the tits. The best example. Up- up into the right. <laughs> oh man, you can't up, wait Oh for yeah! Look at this. Is yeah. that a real picture? That's, that's a actual- real that's something boing, he- boing. Know that, but That's something he actually drew. Yeah, the perspective on that's fucking awesome. So I, I like the one that goes in and it, uh... It shows the anatomy, yeah. like the skeleton of oh this horrific God. monster. People have analyzed that. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. That was a, it was like a little baby. Stop scrolling, there's a little, there's little dick there! Oh, it doesn't matter. Adam, just go back to the game. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, there's a game? He's gonna talk to us. Okay. Is he gonna grab the, the little text bubble? Talk to me, Nolan North. Uh, this episode of YouTube is brought to you by Squarespace. They provide easy-to-use tools for you to make your own website. If you want to make your, uh, your Deadpool fan page, maybe embed some MIDI there. Little little tiled GIF in the background. You can do that with Squarespace. So, thank you, Squarespace. Uh, you can enter code, offer code Dude Soup at checkout to get ten percent off your order. Thank you, Squarespace. Build it beautiful. It's what they would like you to do. Uh, oh yeah, High Moon. They made this. Yeah, which is like not a great name for a game developer. And there's a bunch of parts in the game where he's like, "Way to go, High Moon." You're like, "Who? What? <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that's the developer. All gotcha. Right. Oh, good reference." Yeah. How you oh, doing? He's about to touch it. So how about that Deadpool movie, huh? Actually, I I, I want to hear James's take on this because he had such beef with fucking Ant Man yes. for not being different enough. Yeah. But I feel like rated R, tits, violence, uh, presumably hitting the mark in terms of being irreverent and self-referential and Deadpooly. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. What was your take? What do you think? What do you think? So, um, Deadpool allowed me to like kind of assess. Those types of things, <coughs> the 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 anti Ant Man sentiment. Okay. Um, I still don't like Ant Man. Okay, all right. That's all right. And now I'm realizing it's less about the hero's story because, for the sake, for 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 all intents and purposes, Deadpool is basically the same narrative as all those other superhero yeah. movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. It's, it's it's identical, but they managed to craft a character that was at least unique within the world of superheroes. Yeah, okay. Whereas the Paul Rudd Ant-Man character is basically every other- there's nothing that delineates him He just wants his daughter other. back. He's kind of a funny, kind of a good-hearted guy who's reluctant, but he's gonna do it anyway, yeah, right? Right, right? But yeah. he's only kind of funny. Deadpool is basically- a, he doesn't give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. he, can, he does whatever he wants but to, he doesn't to his be, own benefit. He doesn't want to be a hero, and the end and of the he, movie defines that. Yeah, he also kills people. He, he murders people, which, that's fine, like, the violence, the whole aesthetic difference is, is welcome, a welcome change to the blandness of Marvel movies, but I liked it, I liked it a lot. Uh, okay. I thought it was really good. I don't think it's, like, amazing, yeah. or whatever, and it, I don't think it's a, gonna shift <laughs> <laughs> Press that space bar. I don't Controller think it's going to shift the like the industry or the like Marvel movie franchises in any particular direction. But I'm grateful that it existed and okay. it was as good as yeah, it me too. was. I didn't think it was like hilarious. Were you familiar like, with Deadpool as a comic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Have you actually read Deadpool comics? Because despite my my exposure to Deadpool has only been through other media properties, uh, which is to say mostly mostly like video games, Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, it's the same with me. Um, and like I've read about him, and I've read I've read people liking him. It's it's weird, you know, when you get kind of a secondhand um, interaction with a character. Although watching Deadpool the movie didn't seem that out of place. Like I don't I don't know. Wade's actual backstory. I mean, he was part of Weapon X, right? Mm -hmm. If you like, really dig back into the comics, he was yeah, the yeah. same program Wolverine was in. 
And that's what gave him his, like, regenerative properties. Uh, but yeah, I have, n I have no idea how that really factors in, or, or how maybe spiritually accurate the movie was. Well, from- so, to go even further back, <clears throat> from my understanding, Deadpool was a spoof of Slade Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, Deathstroke. Yeah, he's basically supposed to be Deathstroke, but it was the 80s and well, or early 90s, and they were like, we can do whatever the hell we want, and this they made this character lose, like, a little, you know, he was self-referential and he was breaking the fourth wall, and everyone's like, whoa, this is interesting, and... He has guns and a sword! Yeah. Well, that's, the, that's the thing, is, like, his weapons are kind of just generic, and, like, as a kid, I remember, I think the first time I saw Deadpool was, like, in the X-Men cartoon, and it was like, there's this one part where Morph is changing all these characters, trying to, like, fuck with Wolverine, and there's one part where he's Deadpool, I'm like, whoa, that character looks so cool, not realizing that he was, like, a jokey kind of oh, character. See, yeah. yeah, and then... I think it wasn't until, yeah, like, Marvel vs. Capcom, I was like, oh, that's what Deadpool is. Because I, I had no fucking idea. This is the first time I think that we had seen <clears throat> a superhero or a hero uh, inflict pain on himself mm -hmm. for fun and also for practicality purposes, mm -hmm. um, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I thought that was really, really cool that, because it's kind of one of those things that, like, you think, as Wolverine, you can, you can actually use your healing as an advantage when it comes to, like, when he, you know, chopped off his arm. Sorry, spoiler alert. Uh, when he chopped off his arm in the movie and got away that way, I, I thought that was really cool that they that they used that correctly, um, and it was something. It was a mechanic that I I don't think I've ever seen used in any other superhero film. So so, Deadpool in the comic book universe is immortal. Right. He can't he Cannot can't die, die. and mm. that's some of his more interesting stories is him dealing with the fact that he can't die. Like. No matter what he does, he can't die. Invincibility is good until you're kind of tired of invincibility. Um, but, yeah, I agree with Bruce. This is one of the first times where they had a character who kind of embracing that. Yeah. Like, did the things that a invincible fucking person would right. do. Right. I mean, in Wolverine's fence, he can't cut his... He can't so they, they cut can't, it because he has back. adamantium. Yeah, well, he back. has adamantium and... and sure. And you know. stuff like that, but... But, like, Wolverine doesn't put himself in harm's way, typically. Yes. You know, like, not always. Sometimes he does it to save someone He'll else. He'll walk up and get stabbed so that way he can stab them or right, something right. like that. But, but, but it's not- but You guys are forgetting X- X3, the I, last Magic stand. Pants, I'm not, I know I'm magic not forgetting pants. about magic it. Pants, what? what magic Pants, what? The Magic Pants, pants uh, that at the very end of The ones X3, that don't evaporate? Yeah, at the very end, uh, they- Jean Grey's power manages to eviscerate an entire island, including Wolverine's skin, except for his magic pants. Oh. <laughs> I didn't- even, I was so checked out of the movie at that point that that inconsistency didn't even matter to me. I just more thought it was stupid, like the the CG show p showcase where he's like walking and getting his skin ripped off, but it's regenerating at the same time. I don't know, it was dumb as shit. That movie sucked. Anyway, so Deadpool, yeah. I just thought it was cool, like, the, like he would get shot and he'd be like, what the f- like, you know, like, he'd yeah, be yeah. upset. He wouldn't be, uh, he wouldn't be like, ow, or anything, he would just sort of be like, fuck this, and then, uh, I'd- I don't know, I, I like that mechanic a lot, I thought that, and that's something I'm looking forward to seeing in other Marvel movies. I- hmm. I- I think, I- I- one, I don't know that we will see it. But two, oh, yeah. I think the main thing that made Deadpool enjoyable for me was that it seemed to be the creator's vision, mm. as opposed to a studio's vision, as opposed yeah. to a as opposed to a vision that's working towards something. Like obviously, there's going to be a Deadpool too, um, but like it was purposeful. That movie existed for a reason, other than to set up for some other yeah. franchise that's going to be kind of generic mm. too. So. Like, that, that is a breath of fresh air for it. Beyond the rated R, beyond the violence, beyond the nudity. Full frontal nudity, by the way. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, male and female. Yay, yay. <laughs> uh, we got so close to seeing Gina Carano. So close. Oh, I know. What, what else, uh, what else has that director done? Good question. Nothing. Let's he look it up. He's done nothing. Short. Um, so, I, like, met him. Tim at, Miller. Yeah, yeah, I met him at Comic-Con because he was hanging out with, like, some of the 343 people because he was doing the, um, he works at Blur. Right. He, he was doing some of the Halo 2 anniversary stuff. And I remember talking to him, and it's kind of like, I, I think I was talking to him about the goon, and I was like, yeah, I hope Blur makes it. He's like, yeah, us too. And then like a week later, they announced Deadpool. I was like, fuck yes. Oh yeah, he was creative supervisor at Blur. Yeah. So I, I think I mean, he still is. I, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think you're right. I, I was actually really pleased to see that Blur had done a lot of the special effects, along with Weta, by the way. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, man, Blur, fucking that. What a what a what a success story. Yeah. That that uh, that house has been. And it's I was. Also, like, I thought it was really cool that there was a first-time director that did this movie, and the, and the movie was done well. Obviously, like you said, it was a creator's vision. And I'm guessing, not to give Ryan Reynolds too much credit, but I'm sure that he was sort of the cheerleader throughout, mm. that if a studio is trying to get in the way, Ryan Reynolds was like, just fucking let this dude do what yeah. he wants to do. And he knows Deadpool, I know Deadpool, like, just let us do it. And how crazy weird, right? Because he played Deadpool already mm -hmm. in a movie where 
there everyone was very much aware that Deadpool sucked. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. it's actually funny you go back and watch the original I'm talking about uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Right. God, that movie's bad. It's yeah, really bad. Like it. It's like laughably bad. Yeah. It, it, but it's the funny thing is too, if you watch the behind the scenes of the reasoning for Deadpool, it kind of makes sense because you can tell their their idea was like Okay, well, like Deadpool doesn't really work in this universe, but we want to include him. So, like, well, like you'll see some stuff around his eyes. So, like, it'll, it'll kind of like it'll look like him, but it won't be him. It's more of a modern Deadpool. But they completely miss the point yeah. of the character. Let's it, make it so he can't talk. So yeah, I, I'm in their defense. Mm. Devil's Advocate, right. a character like Deadpool wouldn't have worked then no, in that no era of comic books, cinematic universe yeah. stuff. So, like, it, it took until Avengers is one of the highest grossing films of all time. Yeah. For them to go, okay, as long as it's comic books, we can do whatever we want to. Like, people will like it. We actually have an understanding of how much the mass American audience has for comic books and a concern for them, so we can try something like this. Right. So, I'm not I'm not necessarily excusing them because it's terrible. Well, and maybe they just should not have included him. You know? They probably shouldn't have included him, but that was at a time when they were just including... Everything, like, you would yeah. put anything in there and go, yay! <laughs> like, when yay, they referenced something that I know, like... But well, now it's not an inside joke anymore. It's well, not. We're approaching what year sixteen now of comic book well, if you're movies counting, being. I think the original Spider-Man was probably what set all of this stuff in motion. I was gonna say I X -Men. could be wrong about that. X-Men X-Men came out in two thousand. That was yeah. I mean, X-Men was the big one, right? Was it? No, Spider-Man was bigger, but um, Spider-Man well, no, was, was bigger. bigger but yeah, X-Men was the one that showed that you could do it. I guess yeah, you're right. It was yeah. successful. Yeah, I mean, that, that's yeah. Spider-Man was 2002. You're right. I, I just keep thinking of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back when they're like, yeah, yeah. They, they make a reference where they're like. Since X Men, everyone wants a fucking comic book movie, and like that was years ago. Yeah. Mm. And so now we're in year whatever. We're almost like almost twenty years into this. I, I, like James is saying, people are finally educated enough that they're like, okay, we can reference our own industry, and it's funny now. Whereas you couldn't do that five years ago. That's probably. a good point. Yeah. Well, it's more that it isn't. This isn't a quiet little flick made for <laughs> a handful of people that happen to go to San Diego Comic Con. Right. I mean, it is, but. Feels like it was made that Half way. Half a million people go to San Diego Comic Con. Right. So like, well, I think that's what we're trying to say with, with Spider Man is that Spider Man was the first time that I think everybody saw a movie and went like, oh, I know what Spider Man is. Like, not mm -hmm. everybody knew what X Men was. Yeah. yeah. And and, and yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's what what's so interesting about Deadpool now is that they can get those half million people from Comic Con. Like, they already had my money when they made Deadpool. Like, yeah. they, they and, and I think they probably already had, you know, most of our audience's money as well. And so that's a that's a pretty good amount of people. It's almost a million people. I get, my, my question for everyone who saw it, and I'm um, just curious, did was there anything wrong with the movie? Did anything yes. like what was what was the? Because I, I remember uh, walking away going like like in terms was, of its treatment of Deadpool or just as a movie. There was just uh, anything really because mm. I remember walking away with that movie and being like, I, I wouldn't say like perfect, but I was like, I didn't have there was no glaring issues. So I I had my my issues with the movie were a weak villain. Yeah, uh, and I know that's Deadpool's villain. Ajax is Deadpool's villain, but like, he was just a British dude. Yeah. But then the other problem was, what I think something that's really important is you really need to define the powers. You really need to define the abilities of the people, especially when it's a compilation. If it's just that's, one that's dude who kind of like, if it, Deadpool was the only one and he could just kind of do anything and he was an amazing hero, whatever that means, even Ant Man does that. He can grow small, but when his ma his mass stays the same, and then he can grow big. They, they do right? explain that. Like yeah. that's those you have to set very clear lines, and Deadpool didn't do that at all. I had no idea who any everyone was just kind of indestructible yeah. Yeah, right. and fast, yeah. but like not like then and the, but then they'll have moments where they explain those like oh well this guy's power is this, yeah, and then you're like that doesn't. That doesn't make any sense because of what just happened. Like, I think there's one throwaway line that Francis says about himself. He says he yeah, can't he feel pain. Yeah, he says he can't feel pain. And I, but, but I mean, like, but no, there was. I thought there was something else he, that he was like. He's like, I can't feel anything. And, and he's like, I'm really strong or what? Like, there was something that because, but I had the same problem. I, I was like trying to figure out what he could do, and it's the same with Gina Carano. I could, I had no idea what she could do. She's so strong. She is also just kind of strong and can't feel pain. Like that's that's the thing, you know? know. And so, so that was my my major criticism was I think the villain's really weak. Um, I think Deadpool, part partially because he's such a huge, like, he is a force. Yeah. He's supposed to just go in there and just be a wild card and just wreck up shit, like, that when he's up against a weak villain, it shouldn't have taken him that long. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't really have to, he kind of has fun, and then yeah, he, he they do a good job with that in the movie, but, like, it just really, it, like, I was like, how, who... Especially like Gina Carano, yeah. I was like, what, what does she do? What she, she had like do? two yeah. spoken lines in the whole movie, which is a bummer. I thought she was more interesting as a villain than Ajax was. Yeah, 
And I don't even know her character's name. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> her character's name, and and also stuff like um, how he, like his how he got his power because it cool. exists. It he got exists. suffocated and then his skin well, no, bubbled. I, I, no, it's, I, I know what, I mean, like, I can explain it if you want me to explain it. I mean, um, you can explain it, it doesn't make sense, though. They explained it well enough, but I, I, it, it made, made about it, as... It made sense to me in They the said they had to put the body through a stressful yeah, yeah. situation yeah, in order for they, the mutant powers to... Why didn't they actually burn that, him, though? Is, but it oh, takes place in the X-Men universe. Yeah. They established that, mm -hmm. where mutants exist. Which, yes. by the way, is this the first non-X-Men movie to be able to say mutant and use the X-Men property? The first Marvel movie? It's not a Marvel movie, it's a Fox movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, that explains it, then. Yeah, Yeah. that's why... It only had um, he only mentioned X Men basically. Interesting. No Which reference. I like. Damn it! It extends the X Men universe yeah, as opposed to it. trying to yeah. shoehorn it into the Marvel universe. Yeah. I, th I thought Fox finally got on board and started licensing X Men back to Marvel no or something. No way. Shit. Um, yeah. Those are the franchises Sucks. that the X Men makes them money. X Men well, yeah. is successful yeah. and critically critically praised. Um, well, it makes sense why there was a fucking X Men apocalypse. Ad but the thing that's the thing though. Like they exist in a world of mutants. Yeah. Right. Mutants are kind of explained very clearly. In, in X Men's universe, that you're just born with a special power, mm -hmm. unless you're that one senator, in which case you get turned into a water man in the yeah. first movie, right? Well, their, their reasoning was everyone has the mutant gene; it just comes out of certain people yeah. in different ways. Well, right? It's, an, it's the next evolution of mankind. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's what they said, so, and then they they yeah. put that stuff in his body to basically uh, awaken the mutant gene and yeah. whatever it was. And but they the thing is, they have no idea what the mutant gene is. Yes. Yep. They're keeping their fingers crossed that yes. the mutant gene is his ability to heal himself. Mm, no, 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 no. no. They, it was they, didn't, just, they didn't know what would do it. What the movie needed was other examples of them having done it in different ways. They sort of did. Uh, there was well, all they had were super strong people that were exactly like Deadpool. Well, there's not necessarily. spikes coming out of his back. There, yeah, there was an establishing shot. I'm pretty sure that was Marrow. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah the, there's a scene where they're when when they're first taking Wade into the like underground testing chamber, which they show a few other things. Yeah, they they show some other test patients with some crazy shit happening. But but in the X Men universe, yeah, no. it's not uncommon to just see those people hold up and facilities. You yeah, know? I, don't, I don't disagree. Uh, yeah, I think I think that was probably the weakest part of the film because it's also the most serious part of the it, film. It basically it basically ties back into the wait. How are these powers defined? Because because uh, because again they're. They are building a universe with this. Yeah, like they're gonna have other characters yep. and X Men and stuff like this in Cable. this universe. I also yeah. like that we get to finally see a glimpse of glimpse of what present day of the new X Men timeline looks like. Yeah, me too. It's so kind of drab yeah, and kind like of run that. down, but it's also kind of like yeah, we understand these things kind of exist in the world. That's just yeah. Canada. So I have a question. Yeah, it was Canada. <laughs> so I thought maybe I was wrong about this, but I thought the finale of the movie was at the downed helicarrier from. The I Avengers really movie. I was really trying to figure it, out what, it, what is, that was. It is supposed to be a, so. I, uh, according to the IMDb trivia, which oh boy, yeah, here, we here we go. Um, he wrote it. It's canon. Yeah, yeah. that is, that is. But it, it is right? supposed to be a Shield helicarrier. Oh. Yeah. But they never explicitly say that. No, because they don't have the rights to it. They just can just make something that looks like it. Yeah, God yeah. damn it! But it looked it like it. Fire. It did. I, that's not a thought. I was like, okay, good. Well, that's a little bit. Of, that's a little nugget of continuity. It's yeah. kind of cute. Kind of, but that's the thing is, it doesn't well, count. You guys stay till the after the credits, right? Yeah. So like they're they're expanding the universe. Yeah. They've already said that they're expanding well, the universe. But I think as cable counts, the, I mean they can't go too far outside whatever Fox is licensing though. That's well, the problem. They have well, that's, yeah, it's all X Men. So it's strange too, because wasn't Cable the d part of the Days of Future Past storyline? And I know yes. it doesn't fucking matter. No, but still. no yeah, he, he was. I mean, and and that's the they've already sort of established that there's a lot of time travel and a lot of bullshit. Yeah. So like, yeah. so now that will work just fine. Well, I think the reference to is that one of the most popular runs of Deadpool is the yeah, Cable Deadpool and Deadpool. And cable. Yeah, which is actually a really good read. It's still going, isn't it? Get, I don't know. It gets really fucking weird. I at mean, one point. they are they are. Characters, yeah, they're, they're like the road. Together. They're like the yeah. road show. So if you see road one, you should partner. expect to see the other because of their dynamic. Yeah. So Adam, you brought this up, but James Gunn made a uh, lengthy Facebook post about Deadpool, and I think it's particularly notable because I feel like Guardians is the other Marvel movie that that found success by yep. by intentionally straying away from the tone, like the whole like hero origin story that's been recycled a million times, and probably uh, to an extent is why Ant Man maybe didn't make the splash it should have. Even though it happened in Deadpool again, and to a degree happened in Guardians, it was still different enough. Um, so, he's basically reacting to a quote from Deadline, um, that is kind of misappropriating the scenario, but I'll skip that part of it and just go down to, um, his take, especially applying his, like, the reception to Guardians and how that applies to Deadpool. Mm -hmm. uh, he writes, After every movie smashes records, people here in Hollywood love to throw out the definitive reasons why the movie was a hit. I saw it happen with Guardians. It, quote, wasn't afraid to be fun. Or it, quote, was colorful and funny, etc. And the next thing I know, I hear 
I hear of a hundred film projects being set up like Guardians, and I start to see dozens of trailers exactly like the Guardians trailer with a big pop song and a bunch of quips. Ugh. Ugh, 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 ugh. Deadpool wasn't that. Deadpool was its own thing. That's what people are reacting to. It's original, it's damn good. It was made with love by the filmmakers, and it wasn't afraid to take risks. And then he goes on to say, For the theatrical experience to survive, spectacle fil films need to expand their definition of what they can be. They need to be unique and true voices of the filmmakers behind them. They can't just be copying what came before them. So over the next few months, if you pay attention to the trades, you'll see Hollywood misunderstanding the lesson they should be learning with Deadpool. They'll be greenlighting films, quote, like Deadpool, but by that, they won't mean, quote, good and original, but, quote, a raunchy superhero film, or, quote, it breaks the fourth wall. They'll treat you like you're stupid, which is the one thing Deadpool didn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully in the midst of all this, there will be a studio or two that will take the right lesson from this, like Fox did with Guardians by greenlighting Deadpool, and say, boy, maybe we can give them something they don't already have, and that's who's going to succeed. I agree. Yep. I agree. Well, now, said, here's the James problem. Gunn. Here's the problem, James Gunn. <laughs> you work in this industry. You're successful in this industry. No shit. Like, <laughs> there's nothing you can do to stop it, and it's naive of you to think otherwise. Yeah. Also, the people who should be making the biggest clamorings, like, have this awareness and be clamoring for these things specifically, as opposed to broadly, have already made a thousand Reddit posts that have been upvoted. Yeah. Into the the stratosphere where they say, "Hey, R-rated movie did this, yeah. right?" I saw I saw like twenty of those this weekend that were all on the front page of Reddit, and they were all just filled with comments of people going, "Hoorah, hoorah, we did it! Yeah. More rated R movies, yay!" Not understanding the complexity of it, which is exactly what James Gunn touched on. So, I mean, sometimes you just have to give in. Like, here's I hate Bollywood films. Because what? they're they're musical, they're action, they're they're everything, they're, everything you can they're romance, they're everything because they're trying to please everyone. And that's, I'm like, that's what God, the Fast these... and Furious format has become in America. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And There's I'm no like, singing and dancing yet. Yeah, yeah, it will be. But singing and dancing is a, is a huge step forward, and they've a lot of Bollywood movies have already made that step. But my thing is, you know what? They're successful. So there's enough people over there that don't give a shit, yeah. like I give a shit, so let them make whatever movies they're gonna make. Well, I mean, I, we've, we've made this point over and over and over, which is, I like that Guardians of the Galaxy could make a movie for everybody, but it was also unique in its own vision. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that, I mean, even though Deadpool's rated R, I still think that pretty much everybody can enjoy this film, because it's just so off the wall and ridiculous, like mm -hmm. the gore isn't necessarily really serious gore. Yeah. So a lot of people can enjoy this film, and again, unique in its own vision. So like. I think that's what James Gunn is saying, and there are ways, it is one of the hardest things to do, and I've been saying this for years and years and years, to make things for everybody, but also make them unique. Hmm. Um, yeah. And that is so hard to do when it comes to music, or television, or movies, or what we're doing. Um, and I, it, it is the magic formula, and when people always talk about pop music because it's just a clone of a clone of a clone, mm -hmm. it, it isn't that. It's not that. And that's, that's the thing that you... People need to start realizing is that there there are there is some pop music that's actually very very difficult to make, and uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where if if you start to realize what goes into making a movie like Deadpool or Guardians of the Galaxy or um, something that's unique but also appealing to everybody, it's very hard to do, and that's why I was so pleased with Deadpool because I mm -hmm. thought it was like oh this is a this is a totally different take but also fun for a lot of people to watch like mm -hmm. this isn't something that like you can't it's not upstream color. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's not a movie that only a few people can enjoy. A lot of people can enjoy this film. Yeah, uh, it I also agree. did, I mean, for everything that I liked about Deadpool, it still hit all the same notes. Like, it, yeah. uh, well, like we walked away from the movie, and it's kind of funny, because they uh, they say in the movie, they're like, when he's, he, he, like, looks at the audience and winks, and he's like, like, ooh, your girlfriend's going to be mad at you, because she thought this was uh, oh, yeah. going to be a love story. I remember walking out of the movie, and we were both like, yeah, that, was a, that was actually kind of a pretty good love story, like, in terms of, like, superhero movies mm -hmm. go, like... One of the better love stories, I think, that I've seen in a it, it, ever. It has an infinitely more genuine love story yeah. than, say, Thor. Yeah. The first yeah. Thor is yeah. absurd. Over 12 hours, they decide that they're they're in love with each other. <laughs> yeah. This one makes a point, like, seasonal. Time passes, It shows how yeah. much time they spent yeah. together, and, like, sure, most of their history was fucking, but they also had some, like, good times, too. Yeah. It's a lot more genuine relationship than a lot of other movies that hold that aspect of yeah. the narrative yeah. in higher regard. Yeah, I, I do like that. It's it's funny too because I remember James I don't know I don't think it was on camera But I remember one of the things that you set up that I was waiting for and actually did happen in the film was You were like motherfucker They're gonna put a stupid ass romance in there And there's gonna be a scene where Deadpool's looking at his girlfriend through a window and says I can no longer be a part of her life mm -hmm. And he does that but yeah. it actually it, they execute it well enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I don't think that aspect of it 
I didn't really buy into that because Deadpool is, depending on which iteration you see, he's essentially sociopathic. I don't think he would care too much about what he looked like. Yeah. Even though that, like, he does use it to freak people out yeah. in the comics a lot. Or rather, I've seen panels where he does that, mostly because he thinks it's funny. But I, you know, I, they did also do a good job of explaining it, how he called himself a coward at some point, or said, like, yeah. you're stronger than this. So, essentially, maybe their, their tack on the whole love makes you weak. No. I, and I also, I'm a realist. I'm a cynical realist. <laughs> yeah. And I understand that there are some caveats you have to make. I wouldn't be surprised if in the original iteration of the story, they didn't need him to fight for a woman. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. they didn't. They probably didn't have that. It probably was just crazy meta, and they were like, Listen, you know you want to make the movie you want to make. Yeah. And we want to make it with you. Yeah. But... God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> you got to get some chicks in the theaters, <laughs> and then and then you make the argument. But maybe women don't necessarily want to see only romance, and they go, "Well, fuck you." <laughs> yeah, basically. The people that we did the survey. Are you an executive? With, because I am. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like again, you're trying to make a movie that appeals to everybody. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Uh, I mean, I, not like Marvel movies, but that's what comic book movies typically are. They're they're supposed to be for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And even though this is rated R, I, like it kind of was a movie for everybody. Well, it's one of those things that like we've talked about where. Your audience is always progressively Ooh. getting older, mm. so yeah. the, the kids who are twelve watching Spider-Man are all you know fifty-five years old now. That's yeah. a good point because it's been so fucking long. Um, so they they've actually grown up with this stuff, and they're probably your prime audience now because they're it's like people going on dates now, and they have disposable income, and they can watch rated R movies. So I don't know, smart. Yeah, it, it very came smart. it came out at the right time. That's the thing. You and have, you have grenades. It's a kind of. <laughs> to beg the- yeah. what, I, what I feel like the inevitable comparison being set up is, now I wonder... I feel like the bar's been set pretty high for this tone of movie? And I also feel like, with the latest trailer, that's what Suicide Squad was kind of propping itself up to be? Which was like an, an irreverent, not, not necessarily villainous, but like off-color, anti-hero type comedic action romp. Yeah. And... At, even after putting out a different trailer that tried to, tried to re-pitch the tone of the movie, I'm not convinced Suicide Squad's well, gonna live up. I mean, the thing is, Deadpool is also a very unique character. He, he's unique to even the yeah. medium in which he That's is true. was founded, yeah. which is that he is this kind of entity, and he's very strange, but he works, and they spent a long time trying to figure out how to make him work in a new universe, a new medium, and they did it really well. To think that you can just be like, it's the same thing as what James Gunn was saying. Like, suicide. if Suicide Squad thinks that they're like, we'll just put Harley Quinn in there, she can talk to the camera, it's like, it's it's a little bit more complex than that. You yeah, see, like, I know, I know. yeah, I don't. I, again, I'm. I what I worry about is Suicide Squad was being made, and to again to James Gunn's point, didn't have maybe, and and this is shitty. I hate, I hate talking about something that I'm sure people are working very hard on, uh, <laughs> hard on. <laughs> um, and all I have to go on is a couple of trailers, and also I don't have an innate fondness for that roster of of DC villains. Killer Croc. Killer Croc. Yeah, Flame Man. Uh. Punch Man! His name's El Diablo, you <laughs> asshole. Shoot Bangaroo Man! Bangaroo or whatever. Yes. And then Girl with Bat, who has makeup and is crazy. It's Harley Quinn and she, she can we bless her. Um, may also, a bit off topic, but maybe, eh, so maybe somebody can explain this to me. Why do, why do girls love Harley Quinn? Because she is Quinn. potentially well, the worst role model. For, I don't think people like her I, I don't role think, model. I don't think, well... People I, say I, she's empowering. First of all, men like Harley Quinn. That's yeah, true. But uh, he, Lawrence is right that women like I know, I know like women that are like, oh, she's so cool and strong. And you, you'd she, have to ask. She gets no, beaten no. by the Joker. Well, that's see, if and you're, likes it. You're, so Harley Quinn came out. I and know was she's this, changed. Since yeah, then. she was this like thing, this toy for the Joker, and men loved her. Yeah. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> um, Kevin Smith named his child. After and so, her. Oh, hey, and so, Kevin. like, but she was also she also had like a natural charm. But yeah, she was total just. Well, like, she was like a, a Chicago gangster for, floozy. She was a yeah. banner child for spousal abuse, but men loved her. And Jeez. then eventually she had this kind of renaissance where she took back control and she fought back. And then I think that's around the point where Women's she story. found a female audience. Yeah, I don't makes, think it was I don't think it was until she she got her shit together and it was her and Poison Ivy oh, running yeah. around town, that wrecking sense, up because, shop. That makes, because there, there's an around. episode where yeah. she's basically like, fuck off Puddin' and... Oh, that's right, they have her, like a girls' night out or yep. something. And I thought they were lesbians and I thought it was the hottest thing in the world. Yep, um, that's how you that's, get the men and the women. <laughs> so, so... Women love lesbians. Women do love her now, but I don't think, I don't think that's the standard... That, I don't think that was her... I cannot speak on behalf of character. women because I am not one. 
Okay. Well, I'm, thanks, James, for speaking on behalf of yeah, all no women. Problem. Yeah, no yeah. problem. I'm glad someone did it. It's just okay. So I guess I guess I haven't been around for that that arc of the character, because anytime I see her depicted, she's still kind of Joker's floozy, and she's like quirky and weird, well, she but loves kills the, people. She loves the Joker, but she's also like you know, uh, empowering and aggressive and and all those things. I mean, so. also because it's it's um. Are you hitting up on the D-pad? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, when um, you hit up on the D-pad, he just looks where the thing is, but... Oh, yeah. oh okay. um, by, the way, by the way, we're playing the Deadpool game, just so yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, oh, yeah, we should say that more. Sorry, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, like, also, a lot of times, with comics, you... you restart the medium over again. Yeah. So it's like, hmm. yeah, well, you're gonna play Arkham Asylum, and Harley Quinn's gonna be in it, and she's gonna be back to that floozy version of the... you know, whatever, who only loves Joker kind of thing, because that's where she began. You can't just jump right into... The evolution of the character, but I don't know. Well, I think what they're doing with Suicide Squad looks interesting, just based on trailers, because yeah, we can. But just the second trailer though, which is kind of spooky, right? Well, they're and they're not. I don't think they're making her empowered. No, I, no, I don't I, think, sorry. I don't think that's something to take away. I that think was it's totally actually, an aside. I, her her okay. role in Suicide Squad, notwithstanding, it's just Harley Quinn's appeal has always been kind of a mystery to me. Okay, I I think it's there's an interesting relationship because the Joker's always been kind of a complex character and to have someone that he actually has a relationship with is interesting especially oh, okay. when it shows the beginning of their it looks like they're showing her when she was her his therapist and she Harleen Quinzel hey get it it's, it's subtle comic Batman <laughs> well Batman is especially well D, I guess DC at large I was gonna say it's in a universe where man's called Batman and there's also Otto Octavius there's a lot it just gets worse never it, mind it's all I silly know. it's all bad regardless her Edward Nigma. Her relationship is it is a their entire relationship is spousal abuse. Is he keeps beating her and she keeps coming back. She likes it. I, I get I mean like it, it's just it's well, too, she's crazy and yeah, a murderer. They're both crazy. Yeah. So anyway, I I, I think it will uh, be interesting. I, I like that they're at least tackling that issue rather than like look how comic and colorful these two are. It's like, no, they're gonna show him like torturing fucking her. her up and basically Getting like uh, Stockholm syndrome going for, here. For the sake of all inclusive, gender fluid tumblerness, mm -hmm. uh, maybe there are healthy relationships that exist. Maybe she wants that. Yeah, from no, their absolutely. Relationship. It can be consensual. Maybe she's happy. It can so be a d dumb. They, maybe sub they have thing. a safe word that just we don't know about. Batman. <laughs> it actually gets really confusing. Uh, what were we talking about, Deadpool? Why so do you hate if, Deadpool? If let's say let's say there's a folder on your computer, and let's say that that folder is yeah called Harley Quinn gifts. Mm -hmm. And in that folder, there are many gifts of Harley Quinn doing who knows what to whom, oh, whomever. No. Oh, no, Lawrence. Oh. Let's say that you wanted to share this folder with the world. Mm -hmm. One thing you could do is use Squarespace's website tools to make a nice gallery of all of your artwork that you've collected. referring to his own computer. Um, kind of is. I know, I don't save that computer. shit, are you kidding? <laughs> what if somebody gets on my computer and starts digging around my folders? Well, now uh, I know not to. Yeah, but with Squarespace, you don't have to learn website development to show someone your Here's computer-generated GIFs of, of comic book women doing things to each other. Uh, you can make a professionally designed website uh, <laughs> without any existing skills. It's pretty cool. Uh, we, we made a, a website for Spool, once, once on Go, Rip Spool, uh, with a bunch of uh, fan art and GIFs. It was Spool Space. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we should kick that back up again. Or maybe those Harley Quinn GIFs, either one. I'm not in, sure which in one's In memoriam. Get more yeah. What's gonna get more page views? <laughs> Basically. Uh, uh, but if you wanna, if you wanna launch your own, uh, Hive of cosplay fan art. Maybe slap some Google ads on there. Get your get your internet millions going. Uh, go to squarespacecom soup Check out their tools. They have a free trial and everything. Uh, and you can use our code DUDESOUP to get 10% off your first purchase. Uh, once again, that's squarespacecom soup If you've been if you've been thinking you should have an online portfolio, and if you want to get into media, you definitely should. Go check that out. Uh, you can make a nice looking website. Almost no time at all. So once more, squarespacecom soup and then use our code DUDESOUP to get 10% off. And, uh, hey, once you reach the top of the internet smut pile, why don't you remember us? Remember, remember that 10% off we cut you, huh? <laughs> Send us a link. Yeah, or just let us- just let us look at it, that's good enough. I know Adam likes those gifts. I love those gifts. Actually, who- Adam, who's your- who's your m most attractive DC- Catwoman. Anybody. Catwoman? Ooh, yeah. Catwoman, good also, choice. Uh, also, shirtless Bruce Wayne doing, like, gymnastics is always pretty nice. Well, oh, hell! Oh. <laughs> I remember specifically there was an episode of Batman Beyond where- Talia shared like the the fucking Lazarus pit with Bruce Wayne. Oh yeah. And then he became like old man Bruce, but still hot ripped old hot man Bruce. Old Bruce Wayne. <laughs> and he had like the great temples, but he was doing gymnastics and shit. Mm -hmm. And then Terry walked in and he's like, Oh, so this is what you were like at your peak. And he's like, No, this isn't my peak, but it's Man. close. Oh, God. Uh, how about the Batman? It's so cool. I was gonna say that new Batman trailer that, that I've watched. It's <laughs> a little gay. Really I mean, not that that's uncool, but yeah, it's really. Okay, gay. It's gay and cool. What if Pat? 
If Batman were gay, damn, I'd be gay. Fuck it. He just <laughs> he'd, he'd, <laughs> that's catch it. your catch yeah. your feet in a bolo and then just go to town on you. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a rapist. Well, Jesus. no, you asked for it. Yeah. Oh, Batman, you're gay. Remember? Actually, if, if Batman bol boloed up anybody, that would essentially be consent. Hmm. Like the thugs would be running away, and they're like, "Oh God, it's Batman!" Um, like yeah. Stick out their legs, just like slowly. Part no, their, Batman, I have a wife. Oh, if you need geez. to. So if you get a chance, um, I, I highly, just want to get fucked by Batman. I, okay. Um, <laughs> I highly recommend watching a uh, a cartoon called World's Finest. Have you guys ever seen it? Uh, I no. think it, you brought it, it up before. If you if you're interested at all in the Batman versus Superman dynamic, it's a it was like a three parter thing they did during the whole Bruce Tim series, and it was awesome because there's a part where Bruce Wayne just comes into Metropolis. And he's just all over Lois Lane, and Clark Kent's like, "God damn it! Like, stop it!" And they're just really. I think like, I saw that part of it. That, that part's pretty awesome. And I was a little disappointed when the new trailer came out, and I was like, "Oh, that sucks, right?" Like, because Superman or Lois Lane knows, um, she knows his identity. Yeah. It's like that's something they're not going to do in the movie. Oh, anyway, yeah. that was a thought I had. Good thought. Thanks, <laughs> Catwoman. Though, she's really hot. Has she been done justice in a movie yet? Michelle Pfeiffer, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't think. What's her face is very good. Michelle uh, Pfeiffer, the name he just said. Kira. No, the other Anne one. Hathaway. Oh. Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. Oops. I thought she was a good actress. I yeah. actually, I think she's a fantastic. Well, actress. she was shoehorned into that film. Yeah. She didn't really I, I don't think they. I didn't like her. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did I just? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, he's hurt. He's hurt. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, that's fine. Oh, fine. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I thought they kind of shoehorned her in as shoehorned her in as like the damsel in distress. There were some parts of her that I liked, but I was like. Ah, that wasn't very yeah, good. We Cat need Woman. someone to blow up Bane. Yeah, I think they just like rifle through the dictionary of Batman characters. Catwoman. Cat Woman. I think if Toy Michelle Maker. Pfeiffer wasn't so um, crybaby e, hmm. yeah. she's very yeah, she like emotional. Pouty. Yeah, she's a whiner. Okay, but she has the other. She has the other aspects of a good Catwoman, which are like the confidence and the yeah, playfulness. Yeah, kind of predatory. Except then, then she goes into the bathroom and then cries a lot. Yeah, like, yeah. well, wait. So she. I don't recall her crying after she catwomaned. Like she got, she, she cried got, all the time. Yeah, yeah? She, she, okay. Yeah, all yeah. she did was cry. It's uh, been a while since I've seen Batman Returns, but I recall that she got she got basically trounced on by her boss, was disrespected by everybody. No, that that was all fine. Like, yeah, that, obviously that's crying. Then yeah, became yeah, Catwoman, and then after that, she was like, ooh. She became pretty no, empowered. she still cried. Yeah, she, she was having like a she crisis. Still had a good there cry. Was, that Remember was, when they were dancing together and they realized who each other yeah. were, yeah. and she started crying. She was having a crisis of identity, basically, is uh, yeah. the way they were. as opposed to him fully embracing. Yeah, there was also that was a weird time when they're like, your character is Catwoman. You have the powers of a cat. And then she starts licking herself, and you're like, Michelle, yeah, just keep doing it. Yeah, like, it's fine. Like, there was. How weird would it be if Anne Hathaway at one point just starts, like, licking her arm and, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, it, that was. Well, it wouldn't have worked in that Because all that's what I mean. bitter. There was that really cool shot. Yeah, no, I know, yes. Batman yeah. Returns where she they, got like. Cat fever. They light, cat scratch fever. They light her from under, and then the, sh the shadow of her glasses make little cat ears on her face. That was cool. That's it, though. That's I liked I when her visor went up and they looked like cat ears. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, she Deadpool. had like a little bike helmet with cat ears. Um, on. Going back to your point of saying like Deadpool, um, if they're making another movie, do you think that it's going to be better or worse if they have more budget or even if they make a sequel? Do you think they can go even crazier with it, or is it going to be? Do you think the 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 movie we got was the appropriate amount of insanity? I you needed a fourth wall breaking. It needs to be the same director. Yeah, um, same director writer, please. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's all. That's all it really needs. I mean, yeah. like I think that they could pull this off oh, fuck. in a larger X Men universe uh, with Deadpool and a bunch of other characters. Absolutely, it just needs to be the same same director uh, writer. I well, think so. Like I think this is actually they're doing a part in the game right now that's sort of like touching on a part that I was. There's a whole subreddit of people where like it's called like Deadpool should do this, mm -hmm. and there was one that stood out or one I just made up in my head. It's it's all the same. Everyone's coming with the same fucking ideas, but I would like it if there was a part in the next movie where like the movie stops halfway through and they're like, "You're going over budget. Like this is too expensive." Uh, and like it's, Deadpool it's, walks off a movie set. Yeah, and yeah. He's like reading the script and like and making he, changes. And he's like arguing with like the executives why the movie's too expensive, and he has to go out and raise money. Hmm. And that's like a good thirty minutes of the movie. Like I actually it's like, it's like I like well, like I like the <laughs> that's pacing. A lot of movie there. Well, think about it though, because I like the pacing of the that's first two and a half movie. Hours long. Like, How long were they on that fucking freeway? Yeah, well, so that's that was half the thing. movie. Well, that was that was well, that was flashing back. Yeah. yeah, that's what I liked though. That was, was like, one of I, two set pieces. So yeah, yeah, I think Adam, what you're getting at is as Deadpool one, or pff, stupid to call it that, but uh, um, Deadpool it was OG. It was smart about its use of, of money because yeah, it had two set pieces really that it that it divvied up. Oh god, that it divvied up between um, a lot of flashbacks, which was smart. 
And then the finale was practically all green screen. Yeah. We uh, ran out of money, uh, and that, this is what you get. What is what the, yeah. the game is literally saying right well, now. Well, I mentioned that before. Never mind. Whatever. I hate to break it to you, but Gremlins 2 did it first. Remember when the reel breaks in Gremlins oh, yeah. 2? I do and remember then, that. And then the Gremlins have taken over the theater, oh, man. and the yeah. only person that can stop them is Hulk Hogan. Uh, you know, it's not. He happens that. to be. You don't remember that's the whole point. Like, right, they're yeah. like the gremlins rip the film, and then it pulls back to the reveal that they're. And it? then they start playing a movie of a bunch of like black and white women like playing volleyball, sexy volleyball, and then Hulk Hogan shouts at them oh, from yeah. in the theater up into the projection room to put gremlins back up. Did you ever think that you'd say Gremlins Two did it first? <laughs> gremlins Two. Oh, uh, here we is, go. Is 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 such a. Strange movie it is, yeah. that it's impossible to watch again. <laughs> I, it is impossible to watch. I've it's, seen it a hundred times. It's, it's a I used mind, to watch it all the time when I was a kid. That's the one where the sexy, sequel. The yeah. sexy Gremlin comes out, right? Well, if you watch Gremlins one, because yes. tonally it's nothing like Gremlins one. I know, yeah. like that one has humor, but it's it's like a dark, no, a creepy movie. humor. Yeah, it's a good movie. And then the second one is just it's awful. Well, I mean, what? And it's not bad. No. But it's like, where did this come from? How did this happen along oh, the go. way? He's playing Hulk Hogan! <laughs> well, I figured that was going to happen. So, wow. yeah, I was, I was thinking about the Gremlins game, and, and Adam, I, I essentially Gremlins? had a similar thought to what you were talking about, where I imagine halfway through, or sorry, the fucking Deadpool game. <laughs> there was a Gremlins game. It wasn't I, very I good. imagine there was. Yeah, it was alright. Top down. That's had good music. Enough. It's yeah. Konami, I think? Anyway. Um, I imagine there being a point where it would pull back, and then, like, Deadpool would wheel away from the computer, and they'd be like, oh, this isn't very good at all. And then it would show Deadpool, like, walking through the cubicles, talking to all the programmers. You know, like, you guys gotta step this up. The yeah. graphics are bad. Like, something like that. And that could happen in a, in a movie version, sure. I don't know, I feel like they're... Would that be too much, though, I guess? So, no, no. Because I, I, I would enjoy that. I would yeah. enjoy the... I like the the different weird pacing. Yeah. That, like, the, the movie did. Well, again, uh, I really like tying it into the X-Men universe. Yeah. I like the idea of integrating more of those characters. Like, Colossus having to deal with... He's a good counter for Deadpool. Yeah, yeah he like was. To, with, he's is, a good straight is, man. Is, is really good. Cable's a good straight man. And too. I like the idea of because I mean I liked it. I liked the movie a lot, but there were points where I was like, "Whew, okay, I get it. You got to make a joke every time you open your mouth." <laughs> I, like I kind of felt like Stryker from from uh, X Men Origins Wolverine. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like I saw uh, his mouth. I was like, I was like, okay, all right, uh, okay, that wasn't it. You can't hit all the jokes. I got it, but some of them are good. Like. Like, so there were points where it's like, okay, and so if you have other characters to kind of alleviate that, so that way Deadpool doesn't have to be on right. all the time, yeah. I think that will make the stuff that Deadpool does in the movie even better, mm. you know? Okay. Well, he's a, he's a good uh, ancillary character, I mean, like, and actually, I'm really surprised they made a movie work where he was the main character, yeah, to yeah, be honest yeah. with you. So now I'm looking forward to Deadpool being in other films yeah. as yeah. Deadpool. It's yeah. hard to imagine what plot arcs he can have beyond coming to terms with being Deadpool. And then having a girlfriend that probably gets kidnapped every. That's other what I mean. Week. You have to get really well, weird with it. Yeah. Something you have to get existential. Something needs to happen. He needs to lose everything. So Deadpool that way, goes the to only Hawaii. thing that keeps him going is his sense of humor. Because right. that's that's the best thing about the Deadpool in the comics. He doesn't do it for money, and he doesn't do it to survive. He's he doesn't bored. He has crazy. the answers to all of those questions. He just yeah, he's just kind of bored, and he's just kind of crazy. Yeah. That's what makes the Joker so much fun, you know. Hmm. So oh boy, he blew up in pieces. <laughs> yeah. So so Chunked. I think if you have other characters who are there to push the plot forward, mm. and then Deadpool is. Yep. It's like it's always sunny. If it was always Charlie every single episode, yeah, or always Frank every single episode, it's never as good as if you have like a D or like someone else in there to kind of push things forward, and then Charlie shows up and then he blows up a van or whatever. Like that's that's what makes him so much fun. Yeah, you're right. describing Laurel and Hardy. You need a, you need a straight man I mean, and a funny man. Well, like it, even our dynamic when we do gameplays and stuff, like if we were all just constantly making jokes Quits, and saying ridiculous yeah. things all the time and never actually playing a game. <laughs> Eat it! Yeah. Put the food in your mouth! Oh. Yeah. Ramen, ramen! Yeah, um... But, yeah, we can't... do that. Um... <laughs> it, just, it gets kind of... It, it can get tiresome. I don't... Hey! Are you saying that people shouting at a video game is tiresome? Is that it what you're telling be. me? I think it millions can be. Millions of people love that shit. I, mean, I know, but... I we think, think it's tiring, yes. I think it can be. Uh, and I think there's uh, room to... There's room, uh, especially in this, We are in a uh, unique opportunity yeah. to say, let's reserve some of that energy, yeah, and then yeah. let's just shoot it out when it's... when it's... the, the timing is right, Aha, and it's necessary. Human reference. I got you. <laughs> Who is nice. that? Uh, you know him. It's Green Man. Yeah. yeah it's Green Man. Um, green, green. How, how disappointed are you, though, that... We're probably never going to see Deadpool, at least for like another 10 years, have the ability to be 
in anything other than the X-Men universe. Yeah, that's a little bit of a... Was that a little heartbreaking where you're like, okay. fuck, it'd be kind of cool if he was in Spider-Man. I had almost kind of wished or that Civil War. X-Men movies would get terrible and that they would not be able to launch any other property, Fox. So yeah. they would have to go to Marvel and be like, okay, yeah. curse you, Brian. We're Sorry. ready to be part of your universe. But the thing now. is, the X Men movie, like, they don't need to be tying them to the same no. universe. Sucks, man. No, no, it's, no, no, no. It's ruining a bunch of properties. Like, you're, yeah, you're they're right. shoehorning them together. So I, I'm happy that the X Men have stayed apart from that. Like, okay. I think it, it's meant that we've gotten a lot of really cool X Men movies, especially recently. Two, consi two very good ones yeah, back good. to back. And Apocalypse looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And so. Yeah, we'll I guess. See. I mean, it's not going to be any worse than no, Days no, of Future no. Past was. I, the only was thing fun too, they yeah. they seem to understand more. Brian so, Singer gets there's there's yeah, two does, kinds does, of, there's does. two kinds of comic books, right? <laughs> there's ones that go on forever and uh -huh. ever and ever and ever, and you're like, wait, so so Peter Parker was married to Mary Jane, no, but now clone. he's not anymore. And, and then the clone Gwen of Stacey, when Stacy came died, back, yeah. like all, it's, and it's, it's because it's been going on for 30 years that you're like, what the, like, what the hell am a, I supposed to follow There this? was even an implication that uh, like Norman Osborn had sex with Gwen Stacy and then they had a kid. That was not implied. Oh yeah, no, explicitly it, well, it was, eh, there were flashbacks. And they were like, it Whoa, was kind of rape. Shit. And then you're thinking, you're, you're thinking That's about the, you're thinking right about there. the comedy, you're like, there is no point where that could have happened. What character? You just is came that? up with this now. But then there's other comic books who are constantly going like, got boobs. "All right, let's, let's just start, start over. over yeah. yeah, let's just start well, over that's again." DC. And and I feel like that's also DC. DC yeah. is another good example of that. But within the Marvel universe, well, Marvel's more like Fox that is character's kind of, dead, and Fox. this is the new one, like the new Captain America, the new Spider-Man. Thor's so a homeless Sometimes, man now. but then they bring back Captain America. Yeah, you're right. Then he just comes back because they are too afraid to stop it and yep. start over. And so right now the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the let's just keep going. We're yeah. making that cash. Let's keep going. Yeah. Whereas Fox doesn't have that kind of luxury. It's not always going guaranteed to break box office records That's when true. one of their movies comes out. So they have to so make a good movie. They have to think at least think yeah. about the approach that they're taking to their movies. I, I still that. think it would be neat to use sparingly the X Men in the Avengers Universe. I, I think that would be. Fun if they could integrate them somewhat. If if only for the sake that Marvel is running out of characters, <laughs> yeah, real true. fast. Yeah, like <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I love me some. I love me some Black Panther. Doctor Strange. Right? Not crazy about Doctor Strange. Oh come on now. But but he has powers. I don't know what he does. It, he's got, a, sure he's got magic powers. But you're running out of characters. Yeah. All right. So the X Men are what really expanded the Marvel universe out of the. Here is metal suit guy, yeah. and here is this suit guy. You know, like, so I don't know. My favorite we'll was uh, was X Men Three, whatever the really bad one. There's a point where Wolverine goes in the woods, and he's just fighting. There at one point they run out of mutants, so it's just dudes with hoods on. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah. and they're just they're just running on trees, and like uh, they're mutants. <laughs> <laughs> dudes with hoods. What do they do, that. Brett Ratner? You've done it again. It's Good important job, to Brett remember Ratner. that Olivia Munn isn't the first person to play. Psylocke, Psylocke in right. the X-Men universe. Yeah. Psylocke? Yeah, she yeah. was in X2, she's I think. Just, she's just a right? purple-haired Asian person. Oh. Jubilee in, was in, in three. Two. Her name's Dazzler. No, those are two different characters. I they matter. are two different They basically do the and same neither thing. neither one of them, I guess, is in Deadpool, right? That's not Dazzler nope, or that's Jubilee? No, Teenage no. Super Rocket. Yeah, I don't is. know who she was either. Her powers were kind of cool. No, I liked kind her of, yeah. Once, Once I kind of understood it more, but, um... But again, it was like doing this right. What? <laughs> You're beating her up. I'm just slicing her. You're winning. She's got to be making that pose on purpose. Well, yes, this was on someone's door. No, I, I no, I don't mean that. I just mean like that's she's like her her physique and poses are very life field esque, and that's oh, yeah. got to be on purpose. I don't know, James. I what I would say about the X Men is that they're taking the best plot lines of X Men and instead of making it a four year plan with five movies, they're doing it in a single movie. Yeah. Um, if that's good, that's awesome. They, yeah. have, they have to keep retconning everyone's mistakes. I though, like that. too. They're gonna run out of stories though. What what does X Men have after Apocalypse? Well, but Days of Future Past was Days of Future Past was the name Days of Future Past, but it was barely Days of Future Past. You're right. In terms of narrative, it had nothing to do with Days of Future Past. I mean, a little bit. It still had the the dystopian future where Sentinels killed all the mutants and shit. I mean, that that aspect of it was still. Yeah, after. I know. But they went back to a completely. It, they went back. The, to the other 70s, one went yeah. back to present day and then dealt with the present day X Men's, and it was an intrusion yeah. on the present day. This one, they were like. Let's figure out how to tie this one franchise that doesn't look like it's combined with this other franchise, and then we'll retcon the whole thing. We can start over, and it'll be one thing. But yeah, but guys, guys. what do they do? do they, like once they run out of once they run out of takes on all the storylines, do you just, know what they can do? What write write original stories? Ah, right, oh, that'll, that'll never work. Stories. I think I honestly think that that would be really really cool. Although if, if I guess to James's point, these are news stories. Well, at this point, we're we're getting to that point with Game of Thrones, where like yeah. the stuff we're seeing in Game of Thrones is brand new and yeah. it's not in the books. 
And I, I kind of like that. I think that's it's it, then it's a surprise for everybody involved, and we don't all have those preconceptions from comic books. But here's here's the problem with that. Um, not really problem per se, but it's, it's a creeping creeping issue. Is of uh, uh, what is it? Escalation. So every villain has to be bigger, badder, oh, yeah, and more dangerous yeah. than the yeah, last. Absolutely, yeah. And then once you once you get to Galactus level, which obviously Marvel's building towards, what happens after that? Yeah, no, I know. You're right. You're totally right. Started it's the Dragon Ball Z over. phenomenon yeah. where they're like, they 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 start shooting beams at each other and punching each other through mountains, and by the end of it, <laughs> by the end of it, they're uh they're like sneezing and blowing up galaxies. So, I don't know. Um, well, I think the difference is Marvel is already. <laughs> Fuck themselves in that. Yeah, they've been through. The first Avengers movie had basically New York being wiped out by alien species, and then the, the follow up to that yeah. was surveillance. Like, I love Winter That's Soldier. That's a good point, yeah. But it's like surveillance, you yeah. know, and what does it I mean? Thought, yeah, I and Iron Man 3 was even worse. Yeah. It was just him dealing garbage. with personal issues. Yeah, like, well, just in, terms of, <laughs> just in terms of stakes, it was like a rock's gonna fall on some shitty Middle, middle Eastern Russian city that we made up. Yeah. And. There's like one shot of all the civilians running for their lives, and I don't know, very comic booky, obviously, so, and not a whole lot of escalation from Avengers One. So yeah, maybe they just dodge that stuff because people forget. Um, I don't know. Sometimes CG changes, and then you can do things that you couldn't do before. That's you know, true. Like like have a spader bot. It's it, it's easy to spader say bot. now that like it seems like oh we couldn't imagine anything that's more climactic than aliens flying around and Hulk punching oh, no. giant worm monsters. It's not a question of imagination. I can imagine it clearly. It's just that it gets kind of dumb at a certain point. Yeah, it is. Not that it didn't start that way, I guess. You're imagining, or rather you're describing aliens flying around on surfboards. That's pretty dumb. That is pretty so, dumb. <laughs> you know, good writing can make anything good. I, re I recall, I was halfway through X-Men 2, and I was like, gosh, this is a movie about a man with laser eyes. And yet, I'm like fully on board with the yeah. human drama of this yeah. movie. It's like, man, I mean, good writing can do anything. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to stop at some point. You know, like at yeah. some point you're gonna have to stop or make a decision about things, right? Yeah. To start over, which is why Marvel is so scary. Yep. Because they have like a 20 year plan. Ah. And so, and so, whereas, whereas Fox, at least with X-Men, it's like, Apocalypse is the next one? Yeah. yeah. And then maybe a Deadpool 2? You know, and then maybe we'll try Fantastic Four again, who knows? Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's weird because... What I always thought, the more interesting conflict of X-Men as a narrative was the Mutant Registration Act. And they they really pushed towards that in X Men One, and then just sort of left Superhero it behind. Superhero registration act, right? Was a mutant. Um, no, this, this is X Men. This is X Men. Yeah. Stuff. He's oh, oh sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and almost in a Winter Soldier way, I liked how that conflict was very grounded and much more human than yeah. here's a giant purple alien we got to beat up. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to see X Men go back there, or at least tackle those subjects. That's the thing, though. It starts that way, and then it, at one point they're like, um, and then he fought I'm, Magneto on the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, I'm, oh, Man, I'm, that was awesome. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Civil War here, the, uh, yeah. the comic. Uh -huh. But like Civil War starts very simple, where they're like, "We must register with the government." Anyway, we've built a prison on a different dimension. Yeah. We shot Hulk into space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, you're right. This is grounded in reality. That's yeah. That's a fair. Point. It, it always starts there, but then it's like to James's point, like it's escalation. You always have to go bigger and better, and at some point yeah, it's going to get stupid. Yeah. Who, who made that point? Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. Well, it's I, like I Bruce, said the word. I don't Bruce, know that it was a point. It's what Bruce said. <laughs> I mean, I agree 100. percent But I think that's that's because movies aren't going to go away. Yeah. No, of course not. And then you have, have a, you have a, it. you got two different Star Wars movies to pick from, so whatever. Deadpool, the VR experience. Can't wait. We're gonna all gonna be in theaters. It's gonna cost fifty dollars a ticket. You slap your Oculus on. It's gonna smell like nacho cheese. Yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah, hey, that's what they're, they're just gonna retail Days of Future Past again. Only it'll be the Oculus version. Only you're a Quicksilver. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> I want new stories. <laughs> No. There are, there's no such thing as a new story. It's something, something, only seven stories have ever been told in the world. Blah, 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 blah. They all rhyme with Gilgamesh. And I'll say it again, damn it. There's a series, uh, several seasons of Power Rangers where they're telling the exact same narrative <laughs> over and over again, but they change little details. It's almost like Mad Libs, right? And it feels, <laughs> but it feels, it feels. No, but that stuff's still really feel, interesting. It doesn't feel new, but it's like, okay, I get it. You're building off the themes of yeah. that other one. There's yeah. meaning but in permutation. It's not, it's not the same pig monster. Like, you know, yeah. it's it now it's a warthog monster, you know, like <laughs> Did they ever like, retell the uh, the story of like not not the same story, but the, the like kind of the arc they did with the Green Ranger? What, what do you mean? Well, they like introduce a, a character, that's corrupted? Well they introduce a character who's like brand new and he's a villain, but then he's they're the bad like, boy. But then he turns into a good guy. He skateboards. Uh -huh. Yeah, that happens a lot. That happens a lot in Power Rangers? Because I always saw the Green oh, Ranger. Yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily green, yeah. but white is more the 
I'm James, correct me if I'm wrong, you're the expert here, but I feel like white is the recurring redemption character color. No. No? Never mind. I, it's, it's almost always changing. How many pig monsters are there? There's always, there's always, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised. Uh, you'd no, be surprised, that's what I'm saying. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> How many times they could reinvent the pig monster? <laughs> <laughs> what I find, what I find fascinating, and I, I, I'm nowhere near the scholar that James is, but in my, in my consumption of Super Sentai, at least, um, I what I enjoy, <laughs> I know. yeah, go on. Um, so to to the point where it's like the same narrative, but with little twists. What I love is when they start playing with the tropes of a series, and I feel like Deadpool can do this more than any other character. So in in some of Super Sentai, there's like there's stereotypes that start to be applied to the colors of Ranger. Like yellow is always the strong one, pink is always the girl. Yeah. Um, there are there are episodes where like they switch colors, and then they have to deal with each other's tropes. So, like, the girl will become yellow, and then she has to do strong stuff, but she can't, because women are weak. And then there'll be stuff where, like, I don't know. Some this of that stuff's kind of interesting, because it, it does at least... Reward is maybe the wrong word, but acknowledge that there are people who understand and keep track of that stuff. So, Deadpool... In this, like, I like the commentary on movie production and some of those aside comments in the first movie. It'd be interesting if they started playing with, like, comic book tropes in Deadpool movies. Yeah. So, yeah. Deadpool is damseled or something, and he's wearing a little dress. And then Gina Carano has to come save him or something. I don't know. It'd be fun to play around with that stuff. Probably would go over the head of most most moviegoers. But no, I, I think that's. But I think you're right. I think we, not not anymore because they all know comic books. That's true. Yeah, they've well, had about ten years. With that's it. a good e example of broadening, but then still allowing there to be something for people who want more. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't have an answer. Well, Mr. Sinister's in this? I didn't oh, of course know that. he is, yeah. Oh, jeez. Also, we're, uh, the podcast is over. Yeah, podcast is oh, over. Oh, wow. Hey, there we you go. We can have Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister shows up. Yeah, no. Everything podcast ends. Podcast over. We can have Mr. Sinister to X Men movies. Look at him. He's cool. Everybody likes Mr. Sinister. And he is. Look at him. Mr. Sinister is definitely. <laughs> Look at that guy. Oh, it's on Cable Baby. Cable we can do a whole baby. podcast on Mr. Sinister. Wait, why did Baby Cable already have his metal arm? Uh, it's, yeah, it's Did anyone read Ultimate X Men? This is the last thing I'm going to say. All right. Anyone read Ultimate X Men? No. Mr. Sinister was like an occultist, kind of. He worked. Worshipped the cult of apocalypse. Is that Kingpin? And he's really weird. But then basically, he managed to foil the X Men by just breaking into the mansion and pushing Charles Xavier down some stairs. I saw oh. that. I saw that panel. No. It's like that's his power. <laughs> <laughs> he figured out that Charles Xavier is crippled. Yeah, I think there is a line where he's like, you know, you can do a lot of things, but you can't. Stairs. Yeah, you're he just right. Found your weakness, and Charles, and he just pushes him down, down some stairs. I was surprised during the movie when he makes the joke about. He's like, I'm going to take you to the professor, and he goes, McAvoy or Stewart, I can't keep oh, track. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised at how many people laughed in the theater. Yeah. I was like, I'm glad that joke didn't go over people's heads. They were like, they're self-aware, or the movie yeah. self-aware enough that they're like, oh. you can get away with that. All right. Deadpool can die. Anyway. All right. Cool. All right. This little podcast. Over. See ya. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh. Oh, one last thing. Um, all the feeds should be fixed now. Uh, I said that last week, but now it's probably really true. <laughs> so thanks for your patience. If you have a friend that maybe stopped listening because it broke, maybe give them a little shout out that maybe it's working out. God damn, those are some titties. I know, right? Fuck me. Like this game was made by men for men. It's been like a long-term thing, even like before working here, like at Funhouse, or even like going back years. Like when I first moved down here, I worked for G4 and was like, this is going to be the best thing ever. It's video games and TV and stuff like that. And then I moved to like a city called Los Angeles. <laughs> and I've never really like liked it here like that much. And like all my friends are back home and all my family's back home and stuff. And I have a big family and we've always been close and stuff like that. And so I've been down here.